Hi everyone, I'm Karen McMullen. I am a features programmer at Doc NYC. I'm here today with Hannah Olson, the director of Baby God, and she has brought with her uh, Toby Shimon, her editor, one of her editors, and Justin Wyfek, the DP, cinematographer. Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Hannah, this was a really fascinating, fascinating film with a great name, by the way, Baby God is a great title for a film. Um, it, so it was fascinating, it was also disturbing, you know, um, and yet you managed to kind of navigate not being too sensationalistic, not being sensationalistic at all, um, and navigating the darkness of the piece without kind of getting mired in, um, that aspect of it. Can you talk about that fine line of, of telling a really harsh truth and yet not getting bogged down in the dark details? That's a great question. Um, the film wasn't what I set out to make. It wasn't, you know, I, I was kind of interested generally in the idea that a lot of doctors were we're doing this this thing of artificially inseminating their patients with their own sperm. And then I narrowed in on this one doctor. And the reason I narrowed in on him is that I genuinely couldn't figure out why he did what he did. Um, and so the, the film really, my experience of making it was so much conversations I had with Justin and with Toby, with Justin like at the start of production and figuring out what the story was and how um how we were going to tell it and i think that fine line it, it kind of it comes naturally if you are treating the people in the film like humans and and, tr and genuinely trying to understand why people are doing what they're doing and having empathy for them and then so much of, so many of my conversations with toby were i don't know i don't think we ever really said like oh this is too dark or this is not but it was kind of what, what we wanted to know in order to understand these people and understand their story. So it looks like you have a great team. Obviously, you also had um, Rachel Grady and Heidi Ewing, some Doc NYC favorites to, to help you along. Can you tell me how you all came together? Um, I had the, the idea for the story. I thought it could be a cool film. Uh, I went to Heidi and Rachel, who were colleagues and friends, and asked them if they wanted to EP it and try to sell it together. So then we got it to HBO. And then um, Justin and Toby were both recommended to me by friends, and I loved their work. I, you know, it was like, but then, but immediately, you know, when I started talking to them, I knew we were talking about the same film or at least a film that I really wanted to make um, with them. So, um, Toby, can you talk a little bit about, um, I was an editor for a while. And I know you were exposed, you watched everything. Are there, was there a storyline or a character that you wish had been included or, you know, at the last minute, uh, wanted to have in the film or, or a storyline that you wanted to follow that but for the sake of time you had to uh, eliminate? Um, I don't know if there was a storyline that we were sad to not include but one of Hannah's ideas um, which we just didn't have time for was to really explore how this was exponentially getting discovered. There's a little hint of it at the end, but there was this idea of really starting to get to know who those people were, which, you know, we just couldn't fit into a film like this. And we tried, you know, thinking of it as, as a kind of epilogue, um, but it just, you know, it felt like the story really was about these people you got to know. And hopefully it was a collective enough story that it translated to the experience of what it's like to discover this now. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was really excellent um, getting to know Wendy the most and mm -hmm. her satellite siblings um, as well. 
Um, and it must be, I can't imagine, you know, just the access that you had, Hannah, how you obviously engendered this trust with Wendy for her to let you into so much of her personal life. Um, this is a question for both you and Justin about, you know, shooting such a personal story and when you draw the line of how much is too much, like how you have to tell your story, but you don't want to be invading people's privacy. Can you talk about that, Justin, in, in terms of what you shoot and what you don't shoot? And also, Hannah, um, how far you press your subjects? <laughs> this is something that we would like sit in the car and talk about after shooting or before shooting. And, and it was con like, you're asking the like the, the fight we'd have or the, the conversations we'd have were often about this very thing and trying, and that's what I was kind of getting at when I, about your first question about uh, you know, how do you walk that line? Because there's no, there's no rule book. And there's no, um, I mean, there are certain things that you, you shouldn't do. Like you can't, shouldn't tell someone you're filming them if you're not filming them or, or the other way around. Um, and I get, there were also conversations I'd have with Wendy off camera. Like, Wendy, it looks like it's going into this place. Do, would you, do you want to stop? Or do you want to know more? Or how do you want to navigate this? And she, she was relentless in her pursuit of trying to figure out why, why this doctor did this thing. Sorry, I, I took over the question. But Justin, you can, you can say your, I just, I just wanted to say this was, this was a big conversation. Yeah, I think we kind of, we would have these talks and sometimes we wouldn't resolve the answer to that question. And the characters would often surprise us and take the lead. And I think we were just sort of open and receptive, um, pushing but not pushing too hard and allowing them to engage intimately with us and come to the camera how they wanted to um, without us necessarily always having an exact plan for how we were gonna do that. Yeah, so much of documentary is just kind of feeling what's there, right? It's a give and take of, of what the characters, are, what the subjects are giving you. Um, let's get back to the, the film. What made you decide to choose um, Dr. Fortier as opposed to, you know, there were so many other doctors who did that at the time? I genuinely didn't know why he was doing this. A lot of the other doctors who I looked into had clues in their life about, um, about why they would have, might have done this. And with Dr. Fortier, I genuinely, he seemed like a really by the book guy, kind of like, the squarest guy in Las Vegas. And I, and then I was trying to figure out why someone who was by the book would do this. And then I started reading, you know, the medical text at that time. And then it, you know, when I got into his court cases is when, you know, Wendy and I discovered um, some of the darker sides of the story. Mm -hmm. Is there, are there any regulations against this practice? Um, it's complicated. It, it, it's really, it's, it, no, not, not federally. Um, doctors are required to self-report their success rates. So it's treated like a consumable or a consumer regulation rather than a health regulation. Mm -hmm. um, and there are no laws about, you know, how much of a single patient's sperm a doctor can use. Um, of course, I think this is, you know, this is a, is not practiced as much anymore because uh, sperm is readily available by sperm banks. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think what we are seeing right now is the, the you know, people finally uh, finding out about this. And one thing I thought a lot about that was interesting early on was that part of the reason that there's so, um, this is such an unregulated area is because there really hadn't been anyone to advocate for change here. Because you know, the mothers were happy with their children and didn't know. And it's only now that people are starting to find out about these transgressions um, and starting to make change. 
Yeah, it's, it's the not knowing that is most problematic. Yeah. Uh, you know, um, I don't know. Well, well uh, no, what, were you th what are you thinking? No, I was just saying that it's, it's the not letting the women have the choice. I mean, it's why just give the people the option, you know? Um, I think that that was what most interests. It's, the, it's this whole idea of, of doctor knows best or the man knows best or that, you know, um, people didn't need to know about what was happening to their own bodies that disturbed me and brought me to this story. And, and in the picture, the, the daughters, his biological daughters, seem to be more on his side, slight, slightly more. Do you, do you have any insight into how they might really have been feeling about their dad? They're protective of him and love him. Ironically, they're actually his adopted daughters. Mm -hmm. um, so they're the people who, who don't carry his genes. Um, and I think that um, my understanding of, of Dr. Fortier and my, my opinion of, of what he did is, is radically different from theirs. Um, and it was, it's a real study on how um, people build and shape their own realities. Um, it, you know, at the beginning, the family denied that any of these children existed. I think also those two, um, Nanette and Sonia thought, I'm, I'm assuming they didn't say this, but I think they felt somewhat rescued by him and were very defensive of all of his actions because he was just, you know, they kind of worshiped him. He, he, uh, he adopted them. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. I think it, it would be tremendously difficult to, to change the way they thought about him. And, but, but they, I feel, you know, really wanted to, to defend him in this film and to show that, that, there was, that he was a more complex person. And I think in, in some ways they achieved that. No, that was great to, to have that perspective. You don't want to just have this one-sided vilifying and I you know, commend you for that balance. Um, it, it really made it for a richer, more complex film. Um, so I'm afraid that's all the time we have for our Q&A. Um, thank you very much for sharing your film with Doc NYC and good luck with it going forward. I hope it gets seen widely. Thank you so much.